Well hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Since uh, I last spoke to you I've changed my motorhome to something slightly smaller which is a bit more manageable. You can park it in uh, supermarket car parks and uh, from coach built I've gone to a van conversion. Now the van conversion means to say that it's a metal van which actually gives me a lot more ground plane to play with. Unfortunately there was a few problems, well not a few problems, but uh, a problem with the mobile antenna because in previous uh, uh, versions of vans that I have used I've been able to mount the antenna on the uh, rear door of the van and it's worked quite well. There's a lot of metal there and it's pretty well coupled to the rest of the body anyway. But on this particular van the door is recessed such that you can't actually get a mobile mount on the door and close it. Bit of a problem. So I had to go for the second option which is a magnetic mount. I've used a seven inch uh, magnetic mount which you can see here on the roof of the uh, vehicle. It seems to work quite well. It's, I suppose it's primarily designed for VHF and uh, the higher HF bands certainly works well on 20 meters and uh, I suspect it will work okay on the bands upwards from uh, 20, 18 megahertz or 40, 14 megahertz, 18 megahertz, 24 and 28 megahertz so I don't anticipate any problem. I've got some interesting antennas to check on that which I'll come back to in a future video. One problem I had with uh, this vehicle is I wanted to operate from the uh, 12 volts uh, supply here because the, the, the van has got a uh, separate 12 volt, volt uh, battery for uh, use when you're parked up and uh, it's got cigar sockets. Well I thought they were cigar sockets. It's got about four cigar sockets at various points in the, uh, in the van but in actual fact they're not cigar sockets. They look initially like cigar sockets. I think they're called RV sockets, uh, recreational uh, vehicle is it? RV sockets which I, I think RV is taken from the American term. Anyway you can't plug your cigar plug into these sockets without an adapter. Fortunately the, the adapters are readily available. You can see here that uh, I, I've got one and uh, you get them I don't know, for about five, five pounds, seven pounds and with that adapter you can use your cigar, cigar plug connector which is what I've done in this particular case. But first of all what I'm going to do is actually look at the bandwidth I get on one of the most popular mobile antennas that we sell, in fact probably the most popular mobile antenna we sell, made by the Diamond Corporation of Japan. It's a very nicely engineered antenna, works extremely well, tends to give a very good match and I've, I've used this particular uh, 20 meter version which I'm going to have a look at in a minute for quite a few years. It's, it's sort of, um, it's a veteran really. I think it must be about 10 years old but it still works uh, very well. And I'm going to look at the bandwidth you get and the options that you have when you're operating HF mobile. Do you need, for example, uh, an antenna tuner? Don't you need an antenna tuner? The HF20FX that we see here covers the 20 meter band but there are other models covering all the other bands. The top section can be removed from the coil to make it more compact to easily place in the boot of your car and there's a nice clutch arrangement which, which makes tuning very easy. You don't need an allen key, you just release the clutch and slide the antenna up and down to resonate it. And the top section is incredibly bendy. As you can see, you can bend it through 180 degrees with ease. So it's a very tough antenna. Well, here you can see I've got the uh, G90 uh, in the rear of the van here. I'll put it on a bit of uh, foam because uh, the G90 for some reason doesn't come with feet. You would have thought they'd put tilt feet with it, but uh, uh, it doesn't seem to come with tilt feet, which is a bit of a bit of a shame. Anyway, what I've uh, done is I've set the uh, G90 up onto the 20 meter band, centered it on uh, 150, 14.150 and I'm going to take a look at the VSWR curve now with the, uh, without the ATU in circuit. So let's take a look and see what we get. 
Fortunately, the G90 has got quite a nice little uh, VSW meter built in. So let's take a look. Now, as you can see, that's quite a respectable curve across the 20 meter band. You could quite easily operate on the phone section of band without having really to worry too much about uh, an ATU. As it's set up at the moment, it's going from 14.075 to 14.225. And now I've increased the coverage going from uh, the bottom of the band uh, up to uh, 14.300. Um, and again, it's got a respectable coverage, really. Uh, I'm very impressed with that. Basically, it covers uh, the, uh, the 20 metre uh, SSB or phone section. Now I've, uh, with the radio set to uh, 14150 and uh, if I just press the uh, auto ATU in here to tune it, you hear it click there, and now with the ATU built in and we do a VSWR, whoops, VSWR check, you'll see that spike there is because uh, that's the beginning of the ATU coverage. Uh, but you see, um, on as regards to the resonant uh, point in the band, um, we've got a very, very flat VSWR indeed. So the G90 is a nice little radio. Um, you can get a good one-to-one, -one, almost one-to-one, -one, uh, with the ATU built in. And you'll see the VSWR curve, which I showed before, without the ATU built in. You know. Even with a modest VSWR, the loss on the kite cable is um, minimal. And I'm going to put at the bottom of this video a little um, link to a calculator. So you can calculate yourself what the coax loss is on the length of coax and the type of coax you use at a given frequency. I think you'll be very surprised at the loss. It's very, very small indeed for a mobile setup, even with something like RG58. The reason I like the G90 is because it is a very nicely engineered transceiver. It's very competitively priced. It's got a built-in antenna tuner and it runs 20 watts. Now, what's magical about 20 watts? Well, nothing particularly magical. But you know, if you are running lower power in order to preserve battery uh, current on your system, if you're reducing power from a 100 watt transceiver, that transceiver becomes very inefficient when you reduce power. In other words, in order to get 20 watts out from a 100 watt transceiver, you're going to find that you're drawing a lot more current than you need to. If, on the other hand, you use something like a G90, which has got a 20 watt output, it becomes very efficient. The current drain is a lot less. It's a much more uh, efficient way of transmitting. OK, 20 watts is over an S point down on 100 watts. But on the other hand, there's many contacts you can make with 20 watts. It's quite a, a, quite a, a, a reasonable power level. It's 3D above the typical 10 watt uh, HF transceiver. So 3 dB gain is worth having. And it draws a lot less current than your 100 watt transceiver. So I've found that the G90 is a good sort of medium, well I say medium price, it's a good low priced HF transceiver, particularly because it's got an ATU built in and that makes a difference uh, when you're operating mobile because it enables you to move around the band a bit more than you would otherwise. So there we are, that's the results I've got with the uh, G90 and the Diamond Mobile Whip, the Diamond HF 20FX which is on our website and I think it's 59 pounds or something like that. Um, single band antenna, but single band antennas I think are quite uh, efficient, quite convenient, and I think generally speaking when you're operating mobile, you, you tend to operate on the higher frequency bands. Uh, if you operate on 80 meters, you really need a large antenna to make any noise at all on the bands, and it becomes really impractical. 40 meters, yes, you can manage 40 meters, but again, you really need an antenna which is uh, fairly efficient and uh, I may visit uh, the 40 meter band uh, sometime in the future. But for consistent results, uh, 20 meters, uh, 17 meters, 15 meters um, are good bands to have, 10 meters of course uh, when it's open, 
And as we're now entering the new sunspot cycle, we're starting to climb up it in some very good conditions on a, on a, on a daily basis now on these bands. Um, and you're obviously going to get down days when the bands aren't so good, but we are only just climbing the new sunspot cycle, so we can look forward to some very good results. So, HF mobile operation is a great prospect. You don't have to operate mobile actually on the move. I tend not to operate on the move because I think it's these days it's dangerous. I tend to park up somewhere. And of course, it enables you to get away from the noise and also get well sighted. You know, if you park near seawater, which I've covered before, you get something like a, well, at least 2S point, 3S point gain, which is worth having. If you park on top of a hill, you get, you get gain in the direction of the slope. So again, um, look at where you park and you know, sort of motor around and find a, a good location. But if you're on top of a hill with ground sloping away from you, that gives you some benefit as well. It low, lowers the angle of radiation. So some good prospects there. So as usual, thank you for watching this video. Appreciate your support to this channel. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.